Welcome to the Monster Report, a show highlighting those entertaining creatures of film history. Your host, Nick Adam. I'm joined today by... Elliot Link. Elliot, and he is my youngest son. You've seen him on a few episodes here on the Monster Report. And uh, we've got the mini-me, basically, because we've got a mini-figure. We've got the Super 7 reaction figure. This is a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive of Godzilla and Jet Jaguar. And what are they doing? Hand shaking. Yep, they're shaking each other's hands. And we'll talk a little about why that is and a little about this figure. It's such a little figure. But that's why I brought little mini me, little squeaks we call him, here on the Monster Report. So you ready to get into this figure? All right, that means today is Fox Day! Were you going to hit me with Space Godzilla? No, you weren't? Okay, we roughhouse sometimes, and sometimes the plushies get into the, uh, into the action. We have, uh, battles, and, uh, yeah, they get it. They, they, sometimes I take a line shot from Space Godzilla, or Gorgo, or whoever. So, Daddy takes the punishment here, but... In Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla, sorry, Godzilla vs. Megalon, we have this really cool scene here that they captured into the Super 7 reaction figures of Godzilla and Jet Jaguar. After their victory, they have a handshake. Love this box art. It's really awesome. Very colorful. Just like all the 70s uh, Godzilla uh, movies there, they are very colorful and they're very bizarre, let's just say. Love the fact that we've got the logo up there as we remember it from the movie and, uh, you know, from a lot of the box art, the VHS box art especially, you probably got yourself a collection of VHS box art and so, hey, what are you doing? Biscuits dug behind the couch. <laughs> Biscuits is making an appearance on the Monster Report too. He's our favorite cat. Him and Miss Tips, right? Yes. Yeah. So sometimes they make appearances. Okay, so do you remember Godzilla vs. Megalon? Mm -hmm. Yeah? And of course you remember Jet Jaguar. What's that famous uh, song that they do where uh, the kid is riding on top of Jet Jaguar's uh, shoulders? What do they say in that song? <laughs> say it louder so they can hear you. Punch, punch, punch. Punch, punch, punch. punch. <laughs> All right, and so instead of punch, 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 we have handshake. And this was a really cool moment because, you know, Godzilla and Jet Jaguar teamed up against Megalon, and who was that other monster? Other uh, monster. Yeah? <sighs> We're going to have to watch the movie again, aren't we? Yes. They teamed up against Gigan, too. So two oh, monsters... Okay. Two good monsters versus two bad monsters, right? No Space Godzilla wasn't in this, right? Yes. Yeah, but he's a cool plushie. <laughs> there he goes. All right, so again, box arts, very awesome. Super 7 has, you know, their reaction brand of these little figures that they have out there. Give me a cool little set from the movie. Let's get into this figure. What do you say? Mm -hmm. All right. And we are back, and we've got the Jet Jaguar and Godzilla unboxed. And like I said, they are so little. Here's my hand for scale. And, uh, you know, one of the things about the Super 7 reaction figures, I have some Dune reaction figures. I've got a few Godzillas, uh, not many. But, uh, you know, they, they do, you know, don't take up a lot of shelf space, do they? Well, they do. No, they don't. No, the X Pluses do, but these little guys, these Super 7 reaction figures, they don't take up a lot of room. But what is cool about this set is that you get this kind of little diorama of the land that they were on, and you see that there's these, you know, little portions of the land that are kind of sticking up, giving it a 3D look, so you can actually put them back in there and set them up 
kind of doing this while looking in the camera lens and have that as just a little set piece, a diorama, if you will. So that's uh, worth keeping around. But we'll just talk about these figures briefly and uh, set this off to the side here so we can see them on the camera. So Jet Jaguar goes in for the two hands on one of Godzilla's hands for the handshake. And do you remember that moment? <laughs> You're playing with the mic. Do you remember that moment when he shakes Godzilla's hand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, after they've, after they got Megalon, you know, Jet Jaguar is holding him. And what does Godzilla do? Do you remember? Oh, he does like that. Stuff. Yeah, how does it demonstrate? <laughs> yeah, just like that. Yeah, that was a moment when I was a kid, when I was like your age, and watched uh, Godzilla vs. Megalon on VHS. I thought that was such a cool moment when he's just going straight across, you know, completely parallel with the ground like that. He's completely horizontal and kicks Megalon. And he was so nice, he did it twice. <laughs> Oh my goodness, we're going to have to watch this movie again because it's a fun, fun movie, isn't it? And is Jet Jaguar one of your favorite characters from that movie? Well, yes. Well, yeah. More than Godzilla? Well, I like them both. Okay, I'll talk about these uh, little figures here just briefly. And <laughs> you're having fun. You, you really wanted to be on this episode, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, we talk about the figures and we have some fun. He's flicking r rubber bands at the cat, I think, right? Well, that was a hair tie. Oh, it's a hair tie. One of the girls was in here, wasn't one of they? Okay, so Jet Jaguar looks pretty good there for just this little figure. Articulation, we've got arm articulation. Just so that he can go in for that handshake. Uh, you can't push his arms down too much because they are permanently into that kind of position there so that he goes in for the handshake. I guess he could raise his hands up and, uh, you know, like he's flying, I guess. But other than that, really, you're just kind of adjusting his arms so that he can go in for the handshake. And you've got leg articulation there at the hip. There is no waist articulation. There is a bit of head articulation, actually, so you can move his head left and right but pretty good paint for such a little figure. You know, I'm impressed actually. The colors pop. I really love Jet Jaguar's colors. Don't you? Hmm? He's very superhero for a, for a giant monster, right? Yeah. Yeah, so well, there we have him. What were you gonna say? I like the details, how they do like that. Those, those round thingies right there. Yeah, he's got like, it's almost like a cushioning around his glove, around his, uh, not around his elbow, but up the arm, his bicep and tricep there. And uh, yeah, it's, it's almost like a cushioning kind of thing. He's got the same thing going on there in his feet, his shin guards. They're, they're kind of, uh, you know, they have the, these, these edges to them. And, uh, but it does look like cushioning, doesn't it? And I've always, love just the fact that uh, obviously that's a human in there and he moves not so robotic but he fights like a human whereas in Godzilla you know it's that man in the suit but he fights like a monster you know he's got a tail dragging behind him and all but when you see like what other like giant monsters do you see that are kind of like robots but look like a human there's one in particular ultra something Ultra 7? Ultra 7, yes. And Ultra Man. And Ultra Q. <laughs> Ultra Q is a different series, but uh, yeah, there's monsters in Ultra Q, but not like a giant mech, not a giant robot. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and even like, um, I see a lot of this inspired by Ultraman. Uh, later on, we had the Power Rangers, right? Mm -hmm. Or Super Sentai, as it's known in Japan. Uh, let's talk about Godzilla a little bit. Set Jaguar here. You want to hold Jet Jaguar while I talk a little about Godzilla? Obviously, we've got the suit from that era. The new suit that was made after Godzilla versus Gigan, uh, they put that suit in retirement. It was around since uh, 1968's Destroy All Monsters, and then they came up with this suit 
that they used in Mechagodzilla and Terror of Mechagodzilla, as well as Godzilla vs. Megalon. Uh, this suit, um, you know, at times the eyes look kind of interesting. It is kind of difficult to see on that camera, but these eyes are, you know, what's somewhat in the upper portion of the eyeballs there, so it kind of looks like he's staring, you know, sort of upwards, um, even though he's supposed to be looking at Jet Jaguar. Uh, so sometimes you get shots in the movie like that. Yeah, you see his eyes? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> They're a bit silly looking, but uh, yeah, and his mouth is closed. He's got arm articulation, but again, it is, that is it, so it bends at the elbow, or it rotates at the, uh, sorry, it rotates at the shoulder. We have head articulation with one big dorsal fin there that rotates with it. We've got leg articulation. You know, and these are kind of along the same lines as the Mezco figures, though the Mezco figures give you maybe a bit more uh, articulation than the Super 7 Reaction figures. But for what they are, uh, they're very nice. And, of course, you can, you know, set him up so that Jet Jaguar can be uh, going in for the handshake on one or the other hands. So, there we have Godzilla. Hey, do you, do you know something? I've got a little bit of a rant here, okay, to go on. You, are you okay if I go on a bit of a rant? A rant. Yeah, I've got something to say. I've got something to tell the audience here. Are you okay with that? Yeah. All right. You remember all these VHS tapes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, if you're like me, you've probably got a collection of uh, home video. And so you notice we got Godzilla, we got Megalon on the World Trade Center there. But no Jet Jaguar. And no guy again. Here's another one. Still in the wrapping, actually. Similar artwork. No Jet Jaguar. Not even on the back. Seen from the movie. Another Godzilla vs. Megalon. Godzilla depicted kind of in a red-orange. We got Megalon there. Who are we missing? Missing? Jet Jaguar. There's no Jet Jaguar. Another one. Awkward. Wrong Godzilla suit altogether. Awkward. Not even Megalon on it. Not even a picture on the back. No Jet Jaguar, no guy again. There's another one. Godzilla. Big picture of Godzilla. Little picture of Godzilla breathing fire. Not radioactive fire, apparently. On to Megalon. No picture on the back. Just a background. No Jet Jaguar. There's no Jack Jaguar on any of these. And last one. There we go. Big picture of Godzilla. We got jets. We've got a Godzilla actually breathing radioactive fire on Megalon there. And we even have what looks like maybe the Kingdom of Seatopia in the background there. But we got jets in the air. Just a close-up picture of what was on the cover. But again, no Jet Jaguar. No guy again either. What is wrong with these companies? All of these VHS tapes, so much box art, but not one Jet Jaguar. Until the DVD and Blu-ray copies came out, and these were put out by Tokyo Shock. And finally, we get Jet Jaguar, and look, there's Guy again in the background there. Of course, Godzilla and Megalon being you know, the big names in this movie, but we at least finally got Jet Jaguar. But until that point, yeah, this is always a fun one here. This one, the big clamshell, like the old Disney movies. You know, they had that huge clamshell kind of look to them. So, yeah, <laughs> but none of these. Finally, we got Jet Jaguar. He got some respect in that Tokyo Shock uh, DVD and Blu-ray copies that we had out there. Let me know if uh, you have other VHS box art and if you have one that actually has Jet Jaguar or G Gigant for that matter. Uh, tell us about it in the comments. Maybe uh, shoot a picture uh, to me in the comment section of either Facebook, Instagram, or X about this. But what an injustice, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to wrap things up here. Uh, we've got more box days. This is just a little episode with a little guy here. A little 
Nick Adam, if you will, but he's Elliot Christopher. So uh, we always have Eli Adam on here. You've seen Deborah, you've seen Ellie, uh, but today we had Squeaker Guy, as we like to call him here. And so, what do you think of the figures? Good. Here, I'll move these out of the way. <laughs> you like the figures? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is there anything you would change about them? Well, I would kind of like remove those dots from them. Oh, the dots on his helmet? Yeah. That's still part of what he looks like. That's a, that is a detail that's actually part of it. Here's one thing I would have liked to see is uh, somehow, let's say this could be a magnet that it attached to, that the two hands oh. attached to Godzilla's hand, one of his hand, uh, magnetically. That would have been nice. Um, you know, and it's not, it's not a bad figure. Oh no, he has no arm! He has, oh, there it is. Okay, he's all right. <laughs> if there was some sort of magnet, and I would have changed maybe the eyes on Godzilla, so he looked a little different. But in that scene in the movie, admittedly, that is how he's looking. He doesn't look like, it's like you're, you're looking at the person you're shaking hands with, but your eyes are like way, you know, off to the, <laughs> off into the sky, right? But, uh, yeah, it's still a very cool, you know, little set here. And, uh, of course, you know, if you did get the chance to go to San Diego, San Diego Comic Con, did you pick uh, this up? Uh, how was it? Let us know in the comments uh, section about that. But if you didn't, like I didn't, um, you know, it's hard to get to San Diego living out here in Indiana. But, uh, you know, I saw it on a lot of forums and a lot of pictures that, of people that uh, were there. And then Super 7 made it available on their website, a lot of their Comic-Con exclusive figures that you could buy right from the Super 7 website. And you didn't have to go to San Diego. You didn't have to buy a ticket out there to California to get this uh, set of figures. So I know they're in limited supply, so hopefully you've got yours if uh, this is one of your favorite scenes from the movie, like it is for me. I uh, definitely had to nab this one because it was only $40, actually, on the website. That's not bad. But if you were to criticize, of course, I would love to see this in a larger scale. But I understand Super 7 makes these reaction figures to be small on the shelf. And uh, to be, you know, something that just doesn't take up a whole lot of room. All right, buddy, I think it's about time to wrap this episode up. So, you like the figures? Yep. They think they'll look good on the shelf? Yeah, we've got some other Super 7 figures to put them with, and I actually have another Super 7 reaction figure episodes, a couple episodes coming up for some figures that I've had in the backlog uh, to check out, and uh, will you join me for those episodes since they're little figures, right? Yeah. Yeah? I have an idea of putting them up there. Oh, you want to put them with the Mezco figures? Yeah, the little ones over there. Are they kind of in the right scale? Yeah, we also have the Trend Masters figures. They're kind of in the scale to that, but not a lot of those really work with um, maybe the look of these, because I don't know. They just, I don't think they would work well. But you're right, the Mezco figures, definitely. All right. So tell the audience, what is it they need to do before we close up this episode? Like, subscribe. Like, subscribe, and. They need to follow us somewhere. One of the places they need to follow us is Facebook, Instagram, Instagram, and X. X, that's right. Follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram. Here on YouTube, we've got the Facebook page. Of course, let us know what you think about the Monster Report. Getting close to that 100,000 subscribers because of you. And thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Box Day here on the Monster Report. Your host, uh, Nick Adam, and we have Elliot. Elliot joining us for another episode of Box Day. We'll catch you next time.